First Corinthians 11, I want to say amen if you're there. Amen. Be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Paul's speaking here. Uh, another version says, be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. And yet another one says, follow my example, as I follow the example of Christ. There's a lot of people that are confused today. There's a lot of doctrines and ideologies, and I'll just be honest. You have to understand, I don't have a truth or a doctrine. You know, people say, I, that's, not, that's not my truth. I don't have a truth. Jesus is the truth. The only way you get the truth is you've got to have Jesus. And so I preached this, the Word of God. Brother Crow didn't have a truth. I preached the Bible straight out of here. Been studying it for almost 40 years. I'm going to keep studying it. I'm going to keep reading it. I'm going to keep preaching it straight out of this book. I'm not going to take a little from over here and a little from over there. I'm going to stay in this book. And Paul's saying, listen, follow me as I also. I don't want to follow someone that ain't following Christ. If your life ain't backing it up, speak to the hand. It may be hard to do. It may be hard to say, but wait a minute. You talk a good game, but you ain't living one. Follow me, even as I also am of Christ. Let's lay our Bibles down. Jesus, Lord, I want to be of help to somebody tonight. I don't want to get up here with a ridiculous suit and put on and try to act like a church. Lord, I want us to be permeated by your presence. I want to be anointed by your spirit and have an unction of your word tonight to help somebody, to help those around that somebody tonight. Help me, Lord, to be a flame of fire, God, in your hand. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. As you're seated, if you want to turn in your Bible, I'm going to be going to Ruth. I'll be reading some, some verses out of there tonight. Chapter 1 of Ruth, verse 16. A situation is happening and tragedy has struck a family. Ruth said to Naomi, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. In the next chapter, you know, I will, I'm going to cover some of the stuff in between, but I want to give you a couple of verses of Scripture that you can highlight and mark. And remember for emphasis. So, we know that Ruth decided to stay with Naomi. And I'm, I'm going to get to some of the details here in a minute. In, in chapter 2, it says, And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap, the word hap is an unforeseen meeting or event, or something that happened by chance or even a fortune. Her hat was to light on part of the field belonging to Boaz. Now, see, if you don't know your Bible, that doesn't strike a chord with you, but if you do, it means something. Who was of the kindred of Elimelech? Elimelech was Naomi's husband that had died. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? You know, parents, it's hard to raise kids today. It's hard to raise a family today. It's tough. It's not easy. We're surrounded. It's like we're surrounded by enemies and things that will hurt and mar and scar and mess up our babies. In 3 John 1 and 4, there's a, a beautiful statement that I believe we could all amen it. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. 
To, 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 for your children to walk in truth means you have to lead in truth. It's not going to be ha happen by accident. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to say, what I preach here isn't enough. What I preach here ought to be enforcing re what you're already preaching and teaching at home. If you ain't living it at home, you're handicapping me here. I'm a 24-7 pastor. If you call me, most of you know I answer. Or my wife, though. We're there. You can come to our house. You can eat in our house. If you have a need, come. We'll feed you. We're, 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 we're not here for us. I, 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 it, would, it, would, it would offend me if my house was nicer than this church. Then I got things backward. I need to go read the book of Haggai. I got things backward. God didn't. I, I don't want God to bless me. For me, I want God to bless me, to bless through me. No, I know that sounds very alien to the American spirit and mind, but I'm just telling you. That being said, every one of us are moved by stories. We like good stories, or like they say, we like a good yarn. We're moved by stories. In fact, our culture is shaped by stories. We tend to take notice of those true, gritty stories that are marked by tragedy and triumph, failures and victories, those edge-of-your-seat type stories with plot lines that keep us guessing. We are drawn to those feel-good stories that ultimately lead to a victorious conclusion out of nowhere. We like that. It gets our attention. We... We like to hear them and read them over and over. We like when the plot thickens, the twists and turns that ends in a triumph. Well, we like them until it's our life, our story. We like reading and watching the twists and turns in other people's lives, but, you know, God, I tell you what, can we skip the tragedy and just get me to triumph? Just... Give me the victory. Don't allow me to have struggles or failure. Or at least hand me the script so I know what I'm be going through so there's nothing coming out of nowhere to blindside me. We want ourselves and our loved ones to have trouble-free victory. It's not biblical. Because it is the tragedy, failure, and the unknown that make the story. It can't be a great story if there's not odds. <laughs> Understand that it's, it's a part of the plot, but even someone who was so close to Jesus that I'll go you to, even to the end wanted to dilute the victory and triumph of Pentecost for the church that Jesus is story was to ultimately tell. In Matthew, it says in chapter, in, in chapter 16, from that time forth began Jesus to show his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elder chief, the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and be raised again the third day. He's telling them the plot of the story. He's saying, there's going to be some struggle here. And Peter heard about the struggle. He said, hey, wait a minute. And the Bible says, then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. I, I, I want, see, see, I want the flowery pathway of ease with Jesus. I want my children to have it easy. I, I, I want to make sure they, they, they have it better than I have. Don't we want that? But you have to understand, it's, it's the struggle in the cocoon that allows the butterfly to fly. Sometimes we've struck the Achilles heel on our own children because we want to eliminate the struggle. We, we want to eliminate what they have to learn to be able to fly. We, 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 we want to soften the blows and round the edges and put padding down in life so they never go through anything. But we learn right here that as, as Peter began to re rebuke him, saying, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. The Bible says, but Jesus turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the, not the things that be of God, but those that be of man. It's, I understand we want to make things better for other people. 
Peter didn't have a spiritual understanding. Our greatest victory comes from carrying our cross, not avoiding it. Just go ahead and say amen because you should have done it anyway. Take my advice. Matthew 16. Right after that moment, Jesus said unto his disciples, it's going to matter here. We'll talk about the disciples in a little bit. If any man will come after me, that means your children, that means your family, that means your friends. Let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I pray that God imparts into you some of the things that I can't cover for a sake of time tonight, what we just went through with those portions of Scripture and the importance of who you really are to those around you, who you really are to your family. Are, 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 can they follow as you follow Christ, or are you trying to remove what Christ wants your children to experience? The Bible is full of real stories that affect Real people. And I want to remind us of an account that has all the twists and turns and the intrigue that we can easily read past and miss it. it the book of Ruth is an, ins an inspirational story. So for the sake of time, I I'm going to get through this and I'm going to give you the, the short version because basically there's a severe famine that hits Israel. And so the husband, Elimelech, told you about him and his wife, you know, Naomi, which means pleasant. I'll let that linger, gentlemen. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. And their two sons traveled to a foreign country to find food, and shortly after they arrived, I'm like, guys, tragic. The sons end up marrying women in the foreign land, and after being married for a short time, both the sons die. Tragedy after tragedy. And as the plot thickens, now Naomi and her two daughters-in-law are alone. Naomi decides, I'm going home. I'm going to what I know. I want to go back where the last time was. I was probably in the will of God. Let that sink in. Sometimes you got to go back to the point you knew you were in the will of God. So she decides to go back, but she instructs her two daughters-in-law to stay in their land. Y'all stay here. I'm, I'm going home. Now, Oprah stays. She goes ahead, and we never hear of her again. But Ruth declares her loyalty and remains with Naomi. Now, Naomi's life is tragic. Her life is tragic. And even though Naomi tells her she has no sons, for her to marry in the future, she has no financial stability, often there is absolutely nothing about Naomi's life that Naomi could say, you need to follow me because everything I got going for me is good. It's not. Think about that for a minute. Sometimes when we're facing something, we want to tell her, no, nah, you need to just let me go do this. We, we isolate ourselves when we get hurt. We, we isolate ourselves when we're going through something because we, we, we have this invertedness. Amen? And so here's Naomi, and the family's a mess. It encounters famine. There's financial disaster. They move to the foreign land, and it seems right away they're conducting a funeral. Then there's weddings, and there's more funerals, and disaster strikes again, and the family fell apart. Wow. Now, if you've never been a part of a family that's fell apart, this may not touch you. But the principles still apply. So the matriarch Nomi decides to make a major move 
to go back. Naomi's life is the, an emotional, relational, and financial ruin. Well, let's let Naomi, let's let her words tell the story for a minute here. She said to them, call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt bitterly with me. There's something for everybody tonight if you're listening. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. She's down, folks. She's hurting. She's in a, she's in a rough place. She's where she never expected to be. She's, she's buried her husband and two sons. This is a rough place to be in. Why then call ye me Naomi? Ain't nothing pleasant about my life. Seeing the Lord hath testified against me and the Almighty hath afflicted me. Basically, the strong one ruined me. The blame is on God because he's allowed it. How many of us have drawn that conclusion in the midst of a trial? How many of us have faced something we turn around and because we don't understand God, we shape the proverbial fist of our mind, attitude, and mouth? And The story of Naomi's life features all of the most stressful things anyone can face in life. Death, financial struggles, moves, funerals. More funerals. Famine and financial struggle. This is a real story. This is, this is, this is a, a tough situation. There, you can't glaze over this. You, you, you just can't uh, come to one church service and worship and it's gone and everything's great when you leave the building. No, this is a problem. She's, she's in a bad place. Are you with me tonight? How many of us have been there? This is a familiar story, not because we know it from Scripture, but because some of us have lived, lived through some of it. So you know how the deck is stacked pretty high against this story ever ending up with a high note of victory. It's like, wow. Looking at it from the standpoint of this point, this is as close as you get to a tragedy. You know the emotions that had to be going through Naomi, Naomi's heart, the stress in her heart, the stress in her mind, the stress in her spirit, the loss, the despondency. Some here have come to this place that Naomi's come to. You've been there. You, 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 you. You've prayed and you can't feel nothing. And you, 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 that. It reminded me of Job. And he makes a statement that I think even Naomi had a hold of, which you couldn't tell at the moment. He says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I will maintain my own ways before him. But this is where we need to pay close attention to this story of Naomi and Ruth. This is where we can learn how to attain victory instead of embracing the fate. Because if you watch this, Naomi shows us that when we are in pain, the one thing we try to do is we try to sever important relationships. We cut, we cut ties with people. We seem to, we want to lessen the responsibility, lessen the accountability, and so we cut loose of all stability. Naomi tries to convince the daughter-in-law, you know, stay behind. I, I can't even care for myself right now. I don't know that I could be any good to you. Think about that for a minute. So Oprah Hey, sayonara. But Ruth decides to follow and stay with Naomi. At this point in the story, it's, it's what we don't know that's important. 
It looks like Ruth needs Naomi to lead her. <laughs> but before it's all over, Naomi's going to need Ruth. So it's important for me to point out that Naomi, as she tries to get rid of Ruth, if she would have done so, Naomi basically would have disappeared. But that was not God's will. Just like it's not God's will for you to go through trials alone. Even those people that think they're big shots, they cornered the market on, I don't know, ministry and the word of God and the spirit of God. It's not, God, it's not God's will for anybody, no matter how powerful you think you are, to go through it alone. I mean, Elijah found himself running for his life, rolled up under a juniper tree, and as soon as God could get his emotional meltdown over with, he said, I'm gonna, I want you to go get someone in your life. See, some of y'all, your pride destroyed your purpose, and you've walked away and left it because you thought, well, here I go again on my own. Well, wait a minute. Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. God's saying yesterday, for, well, what'd you do? It's not God's will. In fact, it just might be what God's will is for you to not be by yourself, but at your lowest point might be the best point for someone to join you. Because you can't face your real story alone. Why is it that some of us, of us who are in pain make matters worse by cutting everyone off? The embarrassment? That means pride. Oh, wait a minute. I care for you too much to come with me, so let me play God and protect you from what God might want you to go through. Even Jesus said, you got to take up your cross and follow we start keeping people away and staying away and avoiding those who are there to help. Our real story become a healthy story. The very let me I said never hurt those who God sent to help. It never fails as a pastor. As soon as someone go does something stupid, goes through something. They don't answer the calls, or they stop calling, or they don't show up. Because the very one who could give you the gift of hope has been chased off. So now you're not only hurting, you're hurting alone. You run people off. I got to know, I put them in your life for a reason. In fact, it was my choice to put them in your life. Mm -hmm. So you are now not only injured, but you're isolated and you send away the very people I put in your life to help you for this moment. Your story isn't supposed to be lived alone. So Ruth stays with Naomi and they travel back to Israel. God doesn't want you alone in your trial. Your life doesn't have to be perfect for you to be someone that can help somebody else. That's the lie of hell. That's the lie of Satan. When... Jesus set him out by twos. Don't go alone. Don't isolate yourself. It, it, that's the key we often miss because Ruth ends up in at Naomi's in-laws. Boaz Field. It was a good field of labor. But it wouldn't have been if she never would have brought Naomi with her. Don't send people away God put in your life. Because the field's a different field without Naomi there. Am I getting through to some of you right here? Is the Spirit of God getting through to some of you right now? They need each other. Because Ruth ends up in Boaz's field, 
but it's Naomi who gives her instructions on how to gather the harvest from this field. You need each other. Don't go alone. You're running off the very people God said to help you. He gave you them to help, to encourage, to strengthen one another. It's Naomi's story that had been tragic that helps Naomi, helps Ruth, sorry. Naomi helps Ruth change her story. Be careful that your pride, that you're arrogant, that you're isolated, that whatever, that you're running off who God sent to help. Listen at this in, in Ruth chapter 2. And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been shown me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law. Family. She stuck with her mother-in-law when everything was ugly, when things were hard, when things were difficult, since the death of thine husband. And hast thou left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity and art come into the people which thou knewest not? You went to a place you didn't know. We didn't know what was going to happen. You know what's going But you stayed. You stuck it out in the difficulty. You went through the hard times. He said, the Lord recompense thy work. How can you reap what you sow if you're not willing to go into the field and sow? How can your children reap if they don't go with you to sow? It's, it, Boaz says the Lord will recompense thy work and a full reward be given to thee of the Lord God of Israel whose wings thou art come to trust. How did she learn that? What's he talking about? She, she did. You have, you have a heathen that joined an Israelite. She must have been living a life of integrity and godliness and separation because when, when her daughter-in-law saw that, I don't want to go back to that. I want to go with you. Even if it goes to an empty field. Even if it goes to a barren place. Even if there's trouble. Even if you ain't got it all worked out. Even if you don't know what's going to happen. Entreat me not to leave you. You're the people of God. You're the people of God. Don't let me leave the people of God. Even if they're going through a trial. Even if they're going. I'd rather be with the people of God in trouble. Then on a mountaintop with a bunch of heathens going to hell. Follow me as I follow Christ. You don't have to have a perfect life. You just have a committed life. In Ruth 2, it says, for 15, 16, and when she has risen up to glean, you got to get in the field. You got to get your kids involved in the field. She, she had no business there, but because of her mother in law. Oh, parents, you got to keep your children close. They got to be involved in your field. They got to be involved in what you're doing. You got to get them involved in the church. You got to get them involved in the things of God. Boaz commanded his young men saying, let her glean even among the sheep. Let her go get it in the field we ain't even harvested yet. You have to wonder if when you run people off and don't allow people, you run off your own blessing. You can run off your own. God could have poured out and you had the greatest revival. But you said, no, don't come. Come with me to the house of God. Get with me when I go to church. I can't leave you home. I can't wait for some. No, no, no. Come on. And so Naomi is giving Ruth instructions. And so she went and did it. And now Boaz is like, see that girl over there? That's family to me. You let her glean among the sheaves. 
and reproach her not. Mm -hmm. And let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose. I wonder if our children have missed purpose because they weren't in the right field to glean it. I wonder how many people have missed out on the call of God because they didn't want to carry the cross. Take the easy way. Oh, it's a little difficult coming this way. Go that way. Let me soften the blows and let me soften. Pastor preached a little hard the other night. Suck it up, buttercup. We're going. Well, they lay it on kind of thick right there. Let me tell you something. Do you think the world's getting godlier or eviler? So, listen, I, you know what? It's, 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 it's going to be no skin off my nose where you go. But I'll tell you this much. You better follow me as I follow Christ. Some joker that says, I'm following Christ, but his life don't look like it. I'd be kicking that joker to the curb. You got, we got a lot of big. We got a big bunch of giant churches, all these kind of craziness out there, these weird doctrines and crazy doctrines and stuff. They got a little bit here and a little bit there. Giant mega churches with preachers running around with Bentleys and three and four. To, God never. Go ahead and call me and contact me on it. I'll deal with you over the phone. Come on. Living, living, living like a bunch of pimp daddies. And they're taking from people that are struggling. We should be building more churches, helping more people, help, help, help and foster people, help, help and adopt, help. I refuse to have a house better than the church. The devil is a liar. I'm not here for the fool's gold. This, this, this is God's currency. God's currency is people. Careful what you're teaching your children. Careful, get them, hey, hey, there's something greater about the sacrifice of living for God. There's something more powerful about letting all that junk go and living for God and be involved in the kingdom and being involved in the field. You ought to understand, hey, I want my kids to smell like my field of labor because if they're going to reap what I sow, they better be reaping where I sowed. The spiritual, the spiritual connotation is here. Uh, hey, give more on purpose for her and leave them that she may glean them and rebuke her not. That's a great story, but that's not the end. Because she started off begging in the field. Then they started leaving more for her, but it didn't end there. She ended up marrying Boaz, and now she owned the field that she was begging. Don't run your babies off of their blessing. Don't run. Oh, it may be difficult. It may be. You need to tell them, buckle up. Let's pray. Let's fast. Let's roll up our seat. I don't want to keep you from your inheritance. I don't want to keep you. We're on our way to heaven. Keep sowing. Keep working. Stay after it. It may get difficult. But we're a family. We're sticking together because we're going to heaven together. Hey, it don't even end there. It don't end there. You see, Boaz marries Ruth. They have a son named Obed. Obed would be the father of Jesse, who's the father of David. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if she was successful? Don't come, Ruth. We wouldn't have got our giant killer. I wonder how many things we've lost because we, oh, I don't want to be a witness. I don't want no one to go to church where I go. Or I don't want, oh, my God. You better open it up and trust God. He's got miracles, blessings, handfuls on purpose, lineages and kingdoms and kings in your lineage. If you'll follow me as I follow Christ. And all that right in the middle of tragedy. 
Did you hear what I just said? If Ruth had allowed Naomi to suffer alone, if Ruth had not stayed with Naomi, if Naomi was successful in pushing away Ruth from following her, even though the circumstances were difficult, then there would have been no David. And if there's no David, there's no Jack, there's no future king. Can you imagine? It ought to be difficult to keep people from following us. They ought to see so much of the will of God on us that they're not worried about the struggles. And the, we, man, man, man. we got to be careful who we push away, even if we're facing difficulties. Be careful when we separate ourselves when things get hard. Elisha. So Elijah, like, hey, man, three times gave him an opportunity. You see, let me explain something to you. The intangible thing that I mentioned the other night for some of you that qualifies you is the ability to follow where you need to go. Those people looking for the quick way and the fast way. Those people, and, and I apologize. Some of you, I've allowed some people to come in here. I want ministry, Brother Crow, and I'm going to do whatever it takes. And then six months later, you know, God, he told me i got to fix something in my life. I'm going to go someplace else. Yeah. Look, if you're not going to take teaching, then you're not going to be reached. And it's funny, as, as, as Elijah, Elijah is following Elijah, the popular crowd, come on, man, how successful can Elijah really be, Elisha? There's just two of you. There's only going to be a couple of us. Don't come. Look at that joke over there. There's two of them. Fifty of the sons prophet, don't you know he's going to leave you? You're going to be all by yourself. Three times. But it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And I said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. I wonder how many people have missed out because they stopped following who God put in their life to follow. He said, thou asked a hard thing. Listen, folks, doing easy things is that the reward is only easy. Yeah. I encourage you, do that with yeah. any, anybody can live for the world. Oh, I'm going to say something here. And I'm not trying to be hard on anybody. Young people, there are some people out there right now they won't drink, they won't smoke, they won't do drugs, they won't even, guys won't even mess around with you girls. Girls won't even mess around with you guys. Just because they want to put a ball through a hoop. They sacrifice to put a ball through a hoop. And we got Holy Ghost filled people that can't give up some of that junk sitting right here. Anointed Holy Ghost people. Oh, it's too hard. My God, I want to make it to heaven. My God, I want to be involved in the thing that matters. I don't want to be outdone by some joker doing it for accolades in a newspaper or some trophy. We're talking about heaven. Follow me as I follow Christ. Say that to your neighbor. Say it to somebody. I'm in this to win this. I ain't playing. Come hard times, hell water. I'm following Christ. I do. Because Elisha stayed with Elijah, he, he, got, he got the mantle and the double portion. I wonder how many mantleless sons and daughters are running around. Uh, uh, they didn't follow, stay with mom and dad in the church. That's not it, and there's a bunch more, but I'm going to give you one more. John chapter 6, and then said Jesus unto the 12. Because a whole bunch of people started leaving Jesus. Listen, when people start leaving the church, you better dig in your heels. You better dig in your heels, or you ain't getting me out of here. I'll never forget a dear friend of mine, and he was a mess. 
He says, if they're even casting demons out of me, you're not getting me out of the church. He was tough on the pastor. I wasn't a pastor at the time. Brother Price was the pastor. And I watched it. And I'm thankful for a man of God that even though things were difficult, he'd still get up day in and day out. Even with people failing and falling and making real fools out of themselves. Service after service. Message after preaching and preaching. I can honestly tell you, he didn't give up. He never quit. I'm following him. I was following him. I don't care what they do. I don't care what they do. I'm getting in this thing. Regardless of what it looks like. I'm glad Ruth stayed with Naomi no matter what it looked like. We got mad. My God, I don't know what I'd be preaching if I didn't have a David to preach about. We also go away, Jesus said to the 12, and Simon Peter. Don't that, ain't, ain't that something? Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Let me tell you something. Your desire to want to be alone or, or to go it alone or to struggle alone is the enemy's attempt to destroy your destiny. It is. You have to understand that, that, that something about us that we know better than God or we know better. I want to keep you from hard times. Even G I rebuke you, Peter. You got to follow me and this is going to be tough. I can't, I'm not going to tell you that it's going to be easy all the time. There are going to be some tough things, but that's what's going to make you. The propensity to isolate ourselves during pain is the enemy's plan to destroy us. Will you also go away? Oh, no, I'm in this thing. I'm with you. Entreat me not to leave thee. Being broken is still a blessing. Being hurt can still help. In fact, one writer once said, if once you stop bleeding, you stop being a blessing. That may be a little deep for some of y'all. Don't turn folks away in your brokenness. You might be derailing their deliverance. Can you imagine if Naomi didn't follow? She never would have got the field. She never would have been. Ne oh. It would have derailed her entire destiny. Never would have. She'd have been some heathen land. Never. Thank God she followed someone into a fiery trial. When you dismiss folks, you're dismissing destiny. When you hide, you're literally putting your destiny at risk. When you isolate yourself, when you quit, when you decide, oh, I'm going to go it alone, you're out of the will of God. You see, the famine you face is fatal only if you're alone. The disaster only becomes deadly when you're alone. The brokenness breaks you only if you're alone. You, you, you can't and you should not face your story alone. In fact, your story will not turn out right if you're alone. And you're not just handling your story. You're not just handling and living your story. What you do affects all those watching. All those, don't you? Oh, it don't matter. I had someone say, oh, it don't, they don't care if I'm there or not. Oh, oh, my God, you talk about immaturity and lack of spiritual. Oh, my God, help me, God. How you handle your story will determine the outcome of your destiny and somebody else's destiny. <laughs> Even though Naomi was hurt, even though Naomi was in pain, even though life handed her tragedy, by trusting God in the middle of all of it and allowing Ruth to continue on with her, Naomi helped Ruth's story turn out better than her own. How many of us, young people listen to me, get wrapped up in our own ideas? we got our own way for handling difficulties, pain, turmoil, tragedy. Our own story that we fail to realize that we have the ability and the opportunity to help those around us shape and script their story. How many have suffered a lost destiny 
because we think we know better than God how to fulfill somebody's destiny. You, this may be tough here. Naomi wasn't and couldn't be sure she would experience any change, but she refused to allow the pain to transfer. This is mine. We're going to follow Jesus. He's going to have his own, but we're going to follow this way. Let's see what happens. How many of you can say your life didn't turn out exactly like you want? How many find yourself today in a situation? I didn't want this. In your life, how many have encountered heartbreaking situations, brutal experiences that cause you to think about checking out, quitting? But as we stand, we can turn to this little lady, Naomi, and follow her lead. Even though she said she was bitter, she refused to allow her bitterness and brokenness to rub off on Ruth. She pushes her own pain aside to help Ruth discover her destiny. And in doing so, it blessed yeah. her. Listen, as she comes to the music, the pain of your story doesn't have to become the pain of your children's story. The pain of your relationships doesn't have to be that of your children's. The pain of your divorce doesn't have to become the, the story of your children. The pain of your financial struggle doesn't have to become the legacy left children. Just because you face bitter situations doesn't mean you have to become bitter. Just because you face broken situations doesn't mean you have to saddle somebody else with that brokenness. You see, you now are in a position to help them beat that bitterness. You see, your story reaches. Your story teaches. Your story can help others know how to not only handle adversity, but opportunity. Go back and read the story. Ruth would have never married Boaz, which means there never would have been a David. Think about that. No David without the instruction. How many of our children, how many of our friends and family miss out on our instruction? And Davids are never born. Davids never ascend to the throne. Davids never defeat the Goliaths. Naomi taught Ruth, even in her struggle and pain, how to take on the opportunity. See, in fact, she gave her the instructions. You glean in this field. In fact, or you're gonna, I want you to clean yourself up. Go look at it. When you go to that harvest party, clean your act up. L listen, every now and then, Jesus came to look at fame and say, you know, it's time for you to clean some of this mess up. Put on some perfume. They cut, used anointing. She followed these instructions. Then, when the time came, okay, now this is what I want you to do. I want you to rest at the feet of both. You see, God intended for Ruth to stay with Naomi. Sometimes we push away the very ones who not only would affect our destiny, but we affect theirs. When you separate people God placed in your life, you might just be separating destiny from them. Naomi's influence was needed in Ruth's life, even with the struggle that Naomi faced. Naomi was, probably wasn't fully aware of how much scripting for Ruth she was doing, but listen to me. How you handle your story will either teach them to become bitter or better. How you handle your story teaches people to perpetuate pain or be positioned for opportunity. Your story is teaching. 
Your story is teaching steps. What steps are you teaching? If done wrong, are you teaching them or those that God placed in your life to be angry, bitter, or exact revenge, or to be trusting, faithful, fruitful, giving, and loving? If struggling, are you teaching them to shrivel up and die or teaching them to conquer and overcome? Are you teaching them to praise in pain or quit in pain? Are you teaching them to believe in tough times or doubt in tough times? Are you teaching them to obey in tough times or disobey in tough times? Are you teaching them to sing while sick or murmur while sick? Are you teaching them to trust in a trial or doubt in the trials? What steps are you teaching those around you? Can we truly say, follow me as I follow Christ and push people away when it gets tough? Listen, listen, young people. Get close to somebody with a real story. Find somebody who's eliminated all the mess. Someone who's faced real tragedy and stayed on fire for God. Get close to them. Don't worry about the struggle, but that might be the very thing that propels you to your destiny. Find someone, get, get close to them. We all need to find someone who's walked through a fiery furnace and came out without smelling like smoke. What are you teaching in your footsteps? What are you now facing? And I'll help them script their way through. I can honestly say I am so thankful for my mentors. I'm thankful for those 99 years young, stayed in the fight and fought the good fight of faith. Didn't throw in the towel, didn't find a seat in the bleachers, but stayed. Boy, I, I, maybe, maybe I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to quit. I know I'm old and my body can't do what it used to do. I don't want, uh, now I talk about finding my successor, not because I don't want to do anything. I want to be out in the field and not in the office. I'm not looking to put my feet up somewhere. I'm not. We want to saw. I had five people in my house last night. I want more. I want to affect more. Has my life been perfect? No. But I'd rather get better than bitter. I'd rather give God glory than grief. I'd rather stay in the fight than fail in fear. Someone here. You don't have to have a perfect story. You just have to follow the Lord. And be willing to say, follow me as I follow Christ. The seas may get rough, but he calms the wind and the waves. Keep navigating. Keep pressing. Keep fighting. Stay in the battle. Stay in the field. The outcome of your story will in a large part be determined by we, who we have around us in our life. It matters who I got around me. I don't want to push anybody away. Follow me as I follow Christ. 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 Follow as I follow Christ. Attach yourself to a strong believer. I want you to listen to some things as I read them. Listen, just, just listen. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up, shall also by Jesus and shall present us. Everybody say us, us. With you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we, because you ain't by yourself. We. we say we. Faint not. We ain't fainting because we fight. But though our outward man perish, it ain't looking like smooth sailing. That's okay. He's the master of the sea. Keep sailing. Yet the inward man is renewed day by day for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us. You know why it's in us? Because you ain't by yourself. A far more exceeding and eternal. Don't push people away. 
There's a greater, there's a great eternal weight of glory involved. Stick together. Follow me as I follow Christ. If it's appropriate, take the hand of someone next to you. Take a hand of your brother. Take a hand of your sister. If you're a parent here and it's all right, go grab your child's hand. No matter how old they are. No matter how old I ever get, my kids are still my kids. Show them how to walk with God in any situation. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then... Everybody say we. Because I'm not by myself. Which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. Everybody say together. Because I'm not by myself. There's a we there. Them in the cloud. To meet the Lord in there, so shall... Everybody say we. Everybody say we. Sound like you're on a on a on a roller coaster right now. Say we. Ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Do someone a favor. Someone that maybe needs a hand. Allow someone to get close to you, even though you're in a battle. Allow that co-worker to trust your walk with God even if you're facing. Because if you'll get close to Jesus, then they'll get closer to Jesus. Take them by the hand. Lead them. Bring them along with you. Show them how to walk with the Lord. It did wonders for Ruth. And Salmon begat Boaz of Rahab. And Boaz begat Obed of Ruth. And Obed begat Jesse. And Jesse begat David the king. And David begat the king, begat Solomon of her that had been right. And he goes all the way to Jesus. You stay in the fight and you stay in it. And pull, if you want to get your kids to Jesus, you've got to stay. Demonstrate, show, declare how to survive troubled situations and crazy circumstances and come out on the other side in victory. Why? Follow me as I follow Christ. Not because it's easy. Not because it's problem free. Because it's destiny. It's destiny. Be, be that person. My life ain't perfect, but my Jesus is. Yes. For I am determined to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified.